friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a very hard cataract for fecal calcification and the patient is under topical anesthesia i will share my thoughts and inner voice at every step of this surgery at this moment i am thinking whether i have done anything wrong or not for taking this patient under topical anesthesia should i have taken this under peribulbar block However, the patient is lying on the operation table and I have to decide whether I should go on or not. Ultimately, I decided to continue. I decided to go ahead with fecal emulsification. And this is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome at the limbus at the posterior aspect of the limbus and this is a paracentesis about three o'clock hours away from the main incision on the left side and this is another paracentesis at eight o'clock the patient was initially not able to cooperate but now the patient is following my instructions a big air bubble has been injected into the anterior chamber and now I apply Tripan Blue 0.06% dye over the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble and then I wash the dye out with BSS. This is a very hard cataract. We can use a dispersive visco and beneath that we can use a cohesive viscoelastic substance but in this case I am using only 2% SPMC that is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and I apply some amount of SPMC over the cornea for better visibility the cataract is so dense in this case that there is no red glow and the cataract is almost black we can call this cataracta nigra and I have started doing capsulorexis. A capsular tag has been raised by a needle and now I use a uterita forceps for completing the capsulorexis. Capsulorexis should be large. The size of the rexis should be large about 6 millimeter in size hard black cataracts and this is going to be a very good adequate sized capsulorexis this is not exactly circular a little bit of large oval rexis and now hydro dissection small amounts of fluid is injected at multiple points the nucleus is tapped and the nucleus rotates very well I inject some more visco and I want to make the nucleus free so I ask for a Sinsky hook and this is a deep seated eye also so there is collection of fluid uh, during surgery. So I have to wipe out the fluid in between. Now I ask for the Simco cannula and I rotate the nucleus and I find that it is totally free from the capsule. Some more 2% SPMC and now is the time to introduce the tip of the FECO needle which I am going to expose more. What I mean is the exposed part of the FECO needle is more than in routine cases. This will enable me to deliver more ultrasonic energy into the substance of the nucleus for cracking the nucleus and for 
my technique which I call submarine chop and see this is going to be a, a nice case for submarine chop grade 5 cataract very hard initially when I started doing this technique I used to do this for grade 4 cataracts not in grade 5 cataracts but now maybe my competence has increased and I can do this in grade 5 cataracts in cataract uh, nigras and here it is the tip goes through the substance of the nucleus from one end to the other end almost and it passes through the depth through the deep part of the nucleus creates a crack along that crack we use the chopper and divide the nucleus and here it is I am trying rotated the nucleus 180 degree and I am trying to divide it into completely two halves yes it has totally separate two heminuclei are totally separate so this is a very nice way of dividing a heart cataract and this heminucleus also has been divided in the same way go through the substance of the nucleus near the opposite equator and at a point between the center and the periphery stop and there I is the chopper to do the rest of the job yes this is a completely separate four nuclear fragments each nuclear fragment is now tilted and emulsification is started from its apex the exposed part of the feconeedle is much more than in routine cases but I am going to keep this exposure only for two fragments after that I am going to come out and then inject visco decrease this exposed part and do the rest from the very beginning I am using high vacuum high flow rate and high ultrasonic energy in this case the ultrasonic energy used is 85 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and the machine being used is Faro's from Oatley Switzerland this one nucleus has been managed now I come out inject visco visco that is 2 percent SPMC frequent application of SPMC is equivalent to using a dispersive viscoelastic substance like chondroitin sulfate. Chondroitin sulfate may be a better viscoelastic substance, but if we use HPMC frequently, at least two times, it serves the purpose. This cornea remains clear, very clear. You can say crystal clear in some cases next day because the in this technique the ultrasonic energy is delivered most of the time within the substance of the nucleus so the aqueous is not hot the shock wave doesn't reach the corneal endothelium and the corneal endothelium is protected very well and now I decrease the exposed part of the tip rotate it and decrease the exposed part because there are only two fragments and the post and the bag is empty half empty so there is more chance of catching the posterior capsule if I keep the exposed part more so I've decreased the exposed part of the feconeedle and emulsifying these two fragments FECO power, vacuum and flow rate are same and bottle height is 70 on centimeter the highest possible height with Faro's 
and this is the last fragment at this time I'm going to use an uh, instrument designed by me which I call posterior capsule protector I come out inject the posterior capsule protector this is a thick instrument and its curvature is conforms to the curvature of the posterior capsule you can see that it is convex posteriorly and there is lot of space just above this and I can remain at the iris plane and remove emulsify these small fragments and the posterior capsule is nicely protected by this thick instrument this instrument is available with Joza Surgicals on order and now is the time to do cortical cleanup. This plastic substance has been uh, injected. You can see few pieces of uh, epinucleus and on small piece of nucleus. We just have to remove this first before we remove the cortex because sometimes these small pieces can get lost under the iris. And now cortical cleanup is being done by this beautiful instrument this is a 23 gauze Simco it's very safe we can control the vacuum from 0 to 10 very easily with this instrument but this Simco is not good for hydro polish if there are some cells sticking to the posterior capsule we cannot displace efficiently the cells from the posterior capsule and that is beautifully done by the irrigating probe of bimanual irrigation aspiration. There are some cells sticking to the posterior capsule here at around 11 o'clock and I'm going to remove that by cap back mode. Whatever we use by manual irrigation aspiration or coaxial irrigation aspiration we must do it very meticulously cortical cleanup, cleanup should be very meticulous and polishing of the posterior capsule should be very nice uh, and safe so cortical cleanup is done and some cortex which was there superiorly has been removed by cap back mode the vacuum is quite low in this case I used 50 millimeter of mercury vacuum and flow rate was 20 and now the cap back and the antechamber has been filled up by visco and this is a hydrophobic monofocal intraocular lens being placed in the capsular bag this is Hoya from Japan no financial interest and the this is a beautiful preloaded system never fails you just have to inject the lens in the capsular bag and it opens very slowly turn the lens and now this is removal of visco this is a 23 gauze simco I'm removing the viscoelastic substance by irrigation this time I'm irrigating so they are double irrigation actually I'm irrigating through the aspirating port and there is already on irrigation from the side so irrigation for some time and then irrigation and aspiration I remove lot of cortic lot of visco from the anterior chamber and from the capsular bag friends this is a totally unedited surgery so that you can have a feeling of watching a live surgery and now I'm using bimanual irrigation aspiration 
and this removes almost 100% visco from the anterior chamber and before I come out I inject air because I knew that in this case the anterior chamber is going to be shallow because through the side ports a lot of fluid will come out and the anterior chamber will be almost flat so injected air and came out and now I have injected moxie and closing the side ports by hydration of corneal stroma on either side of it and after this there is going to be a final lavage of the anterior chamber so we are towards the end of the surgery friends my aim is to hammer on your head the techniques of cataract surgery no patient should lose vision because of bad surgery you should develop that level of competence whatever you want to do you must do it with great competence you must develop that competence that those skills this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber at this time uh, the anterior chamber is being formed very nicely integrity of the wounds are checked and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.